Okay, so if it, everything worked on this, uh, the wave screen as it's known, you'll see uh, Rebug is flashed up instead of the uh, the typical PS3 logo. Um, and also, you got a couple couple new options on the main screen. You got the quick setup uh, or quick sign up, excuse me, and then you got these two down here. Now, uh, I'll be perfectly honest, I've never really used either of these, so uh, if you want to play with that or if you want to uh, say something in the comments of what you figured out with them, um, I can uh, make another video and we can get everyone spun up on what everything does. But um, about the biggest difference, you notice everything's got a really cool sort of uh, red, uh, red coloring to it now instead of the um, standard blue. Um, so right over here, this will be your main tab in the uh, the game section. We got a couple new folders here. <clears throat> we got the uh, App Home PS3 game, which uh, this works for whenever you're mounting a game. Um, whenever you mount a game to the PS3 using uh, any sort of client, whether it's Webman, uh, Multiman, or any of the others, um, it'll pop up here. Uh, you got our package manager, and that's what I was telling you about before, uh, and that's going to be used to, to uh, do all your like, installation of your packages and so on and so forth. Now, down here uh, in my games, like once you start getting everything uh, loaded in and um, copied over to your PS3, this is where you'll launch all of your games. Now, obviously, we don't have anything backed up just yet, so uh, there's nothing in it. And this typically happens um, because it's not updated. So the webman setup, this is where that package that we uh, looked at before can't, comes into play. So open this up, go down and install package files. And uh, you can either store them here in your PS3's main, uh, main hard drive, which is hdd0 slash packages. Uh, you can open that up in an FTP browser or um, like you have file browsers and certain pack or certain programs, etc. Um, this will be like inside of like a, a folder labeled packages on a flash drive, and then this is for everything else. So right here we see the webman mod. Uh, it's an update, so you just install it. Then you come back down here, and we see right there, and then you run it. Pretty straightforward. Mm-hmm. Some, uh, some packages will give you confirmation, like once you install them, others don't. Um, typically once that's done, come back over here, and Webman should be fully functional. Sometimes it takes a minute to load up. And if you'll excuse us, we need to let the dog in. Alright, so, uh, one thing that I did forget to mention, I've already taken care of it off camera, is, um, found, or I uh, found out that Webman does not natively allow you to, um, install games to your hard drive. So you'll need an additional, uh, uh homebrew, that's what these, uh, programs are called. Uh, you'll need an additional homebrew that'll allow you to rip the games directly to the hard drive. Uh, now I've already put it onto a flash drive, but, uh, and I'll leave a link for it in the description. Um, but you're gonna need this Multiman. It's probably the best one that's out there because it's uh, had the most uh, development. It's been with uh, the PlayStation 3 since basically day one. <clears throat> so once that's done, you can see right there, Multiman is installed. You just run it. And it's going to give you a couple uh, little things right here. you got to accept all of them. <laughs> and once that's up, um, if you all notice the annoying music, I personally find it very annoying. Uh, you can change that going into settings. Uh, where is it? 
Well, that's that's a beautiful thing about multi man is it gives you so much that you can do. Uh Dean Audio Disable. Uh, yes, Sorry. Anyway, so once you got that in there, you can see uh this Multiman even has the ability to play retro classics, so you can either put uh, Super Nintendo emulators uh, or ROMs on here, as well as PS1 games, PS2 games, uh, anything you can do. Uh, another really nice thing is you can even ex uh, plug in an external hard drive to your PS3 and run games off of that. Uh, makes it really nice if you got a, a tiny little hard drive. This one, I believe, only has a 120 gig hard drive. Uh, but just to uh, just so that we can show you all proof of concept, we are going to uh, install a game for you. Uh, so, Katie, you want to put the game in? Will do. Oh God. Maybe don't drop it. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, uh, so the game that we're going to be installing is Skyrim. <clears throat> As you can see right there, it comes right up. Now you hit um, triangle and you bring up all the options. And uh, you can either create an ISO image of it, um, and Multiman will either run ISOs or uh, strict backups. Now, personally, I prefer to run backups um, just because you get better load times, etc. Um, I don't really know the, uh, the biggest advantage to running an ISO. Maybe the file size is smaller, but uh, I typically don't do that. So here, uh, you can choose where you want to install the game. Uh, if you got a USB drive attached or directly to the hard drive. Just hit confirm. You want to copy from BD-ROM? Yes. And then this will take a hot minute. Oh god. <laughs> so what's the advantage to copying over the game? So, um, the biggest advantage to having a game running directly off of the hard drive is load times. Um, for the basic user, that is the nicest thing. Uh, now, if you want to do a little bit more, like do it, delving into some of the stuff that I do, um, the step above just having better load times, you you can even install um, mods for the game. Um, so just like aftermarket things, like you would see on the PC side, um, you could have uh, custom models, you could have um, custom weapons, you know, just anything anything that you could even imagine, anything that. Uh, deals with the software end of modding. Um, <clears throat> that can all be done. And I guess now would be a good time to talk about the different types of firmware with the PlayStation 3. You either have the uh, CEX, which is the uh, your retail firmware, it's known as. Um, you have, well, there's technically three firmwares. There's the retail firmware, which is straight from Sony. There's the CEX, which is a modified retail firmware, which allows you to run any sort of homebrew. And then you have uh, DEX. Now, the DEX firmware allows you to um, do a lot more. And uh, that would come into play with using the, uh, the PlayStation 3's uh, SDK, uh, Software Devel Development Kit. And that's kind of what I do. Um, and that's going to allow you to modify the... Uh, in-game memory um, in real time and you can have uh, different programs It's for development purposes, debugging, etc. That's where a lot of the higher end uh, modifications come from. Uh, you can still do that with the, uh, the CEX firmware but you don't get um, as much because you can't typically set uh, hardware breakpoints and all that other stuff with the CEX firmware. So basically what we're doing is even though we're playing Skyrim in this case on the PS3, we're kind of making it like the PC version. Exactly. In a way. That's fun. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, that's a really good way of putting it, actually. So, my next question would be then, if you can just do all this stuff on the PC version, why bother doing it at all on the PS3? Uh, some people like the portability. 
uh, or some people don't have a uh, PC that can run games like Skyrim. Um, so if you got a PS3 lying around, uh, so let's see. My current desktop computer, if you look at it, um, the the graphics card alone will run you about $200 to $250 and up. Um, if you if you got a PS3 lying around and uh, you can downgrade it, and uh, there are certain types of PS3s that you can't downgrade, such as the uh, the slim model with the sliding top. Um, if you got a PS3 that you can downgrade, then you, you could possibly be spending either uh, if you got a flash kit, uh, or if you're gonna buy a flash kit, which is only about eighty dollars. Um, sounds like a big chunk of change, but look at uh, everything that you're gonna be able to do in the long run. So you spend eighty bucks, you get the flash kit, and then you do everything by yourself. Um, it's eighty bucks, and you can do all of this stuff um, versus spending two hundred fifty dollars plus. Or if you don't even have a computer, like a desktop computer, it'd be even more than that. So it's very economical to uh, to mod modify your PlayStation 3 to run uh, backup games and so on and so forth. That's pretty cool. Yeah. So it comes down to really accessibility. Exactly. That's neat. And there's there's something really amazing about Multiman and Webman. They were developed by uh, the same group of people. Um, you can actually put or take an external hard drive, attach it to your network, and you can either have it running from your desktop or uh, from, from like a, a router uh, that has a USB slot on it. And you can have all of your games accessible on a network hard drive. Uh, so if you got multiple modded PS3s, uh, you can have one in your living room and one in the, wherever, your office, bedroom, wherever, and you can uh, run the same games from a single network drive. Uh, so that's a really cool feature that I love about it. Wow. And that's even better than uh, uh, ripping everything to, a, to the physical hard drive. Um, well, in some cases, if you got internet that's uh, decent enough to stream video games. But yeah, uh, so from that, um, this is obviously, obviously going to take... Uh, decent little chunk of time uh, we're gonna skip through it so uh, we will catch up with you uh, later so while uh, we are installing uh, Skyrim to the desktop or to the <laughs> excuse me to the hard drive uh, I'll take this time to go over um, some of the nicer features of webman um, so this is on the uh, on your internet browser it literally works on any internet browser uh, all you got to do is punch in your PlayStation 3's IP address in your address bar up here and you get greeted with this screen right here. So what this is right here is a, uh, it's just an interface. Like you can go through, see what's on your hard drive, so on and so forth. You can um, see what's in your games folder. Uh, you can mount the game directly, delete it, add a new folder, uh, so on and so forth. You can do basically anything with it, and it's really cool. Um, once you, uh, once you start installing games, they'll be populated inside of here. Uh, you have a slider that's just a different view for it. Um, <clears throat> this right here, uh, something that I was actually showing her earlier, which is a really nice thing, is you can actually adjust the fan speed. Um, and uh, <laughs> earlier, when we had initially installed Webman, the fan was crazy, ridiculous loud. Um, so we had to adjust it. So, um, one thing to note here, if you, uh, if you guys are making videos, taking screenshots, stuff like that, uh, you want to hide everything that's down right here. And of course, uh, you're just looking at black bars right now, but, uh, what these are, it's your console ID. Uh, and that's the thing that a lot of, uh, a lot of the, uh, asshole hackers on the PlayStation, uh, modding scene want to steal from you. Uh, and what that does is gives you access to the PlayStation uh, network. <clears throat> so um, you can go online. You can get. You can either find free CIDs or you can buy them. Uh, typically, people will use those just to um, get online and do anything else like that. Um, and it's just uh, like 
for the average user, you're not really going to worry about that because it's not exactly the smartest thing to just uh, get online with a modded console. Um, but that's about uh, it for that. You can check out pretty much everything. Like uh, some, um, I've never really figured out how to make it work, but you can actually record your gameplay. Um, but it eats up a shitload of uh, your PS3's uh, processing power and tends to bog it down pretty pretty bad. Uh, here you have even more settings. Um, a lot of the stuff you can just play with. Like it's it's a very robust system. Um, <laughs> but yeah, that that pretty much uh, pretty much covers everything about about this. Um, you can even send uh, send notifications to your PlayStation 3, which I think is uh, is really cool. Uh, so we'll go ahead and uh, and send one of these. Um, just something like that, make it fun. <laughs> Look at that. Yeah, that's fun little stuff that you can do. But I mean, for the most part, it's uh, it's a really nice nice system that you can go through and figure out. Um, the other nice little benefit to, to Webman is uh, local FTP support. Um, this way, you can just jump right into your PlayStation 3, uh, and you can just add anything over to it. Like if you got if you um, if you got like a package file or something like that, you don't want to hunt around and scrounge for uh, for your flash drive. You just open up your FTP and you can drop it right into the packages folder here. Um, same with any plugins, your ISOs, uh, anything. I mean, it's it's a very very nice little system. They've done a lot of work with it uh, to to bring it up to where it's at now. But yeah. Um, if you guys really, really want me to, I can go and do a uh, more in-depth, uh, in-depth video about everything that Webman does. But that's a basic little overlay of what what you can do, what you can expect. But uh, we still got a couple minutes left while uh, Skyrim is copying over. Uh, for you guys, it'll be more like an instant, but for us, it's been an eternity. <laughs> <laughs> so we will uh, catch you, catch you up uh, in the next section.